level 55 is basically here 100 experience points away i originally planned to hit the on stream while starting the new event but really don't want to waste this extra energy so There we go, fantastic. Might have taken me a day or two too many, but at the same time I kind of stopped spending crystals to refresh stamina. So, what do we get now? Because Voyage Memento is still hanging on like this. We need to clear the level up stage at 60, all the rank up trial at 60, as well as all the star trial at 60. Again, these should be fairly easy, and I think I want to run these ones first before I go on leveling up my units. So first, memory retrieval is at 60. I guess we're stuck with 8 mats a day for a little while longer. I also started fixing up quite a few units so that they all have a Devil Tarot with a second skill. I'm finally starting to get some properly statted Tarots as well. And also, thankfully, we're getting some Elysian coins as well. Because these coins have been starting to run out of really, really quickly between the talent upgrades, cap upgrades, as well as the weapon upgrades. Uh, also, Elysian coins aren't really that easily farmable. Uh, you can get them from shop trading, you can get them from events. But if you just want to sit down and farm them, there's no stage for that. Well, the impact cleared. And now we can go do the development part. Breaker, Seeker, Defender, Destroyer, Watcher. Nine characters to rank 11 and 12 to 55. Got 170k. Uh, we might actually not be able to do it. So, here we are. Rank 11. Of course, we're going with the Gale Spin here. Not sure if I want to replace Charge. I really like the Charge skill. Might want to replace the Heal instead. This little self heal that gives Dipsy. But likely once she hits 5 stars. Again, I know she falls off later down the line. But it's Revia. I basically picked the game up because I got the hots for Revia. So she's getting 5 stars eventually. Moving on. Meitha. Yeah, it's 40,000 per character. It's so heavy. Uh, Meta's combo is a pretty nice skill, but I don't really need Meta to deal damage. Also, 4 turns cooldown for a 2 tilt push is a bit too much. On the other hand, this one has a 3 turns duration, as well as a 40% damage taken reduction. And since she's currently my only tank, I think I might want to pick this one up. <laughs> uh, next one has got to be Gloria. And we only have 40,000 points left. We could do three characters, almost four, but no, not really. As for Gloria, I think it's mostly a matter of stats for her. Neither of these skills look that great, but I think we can just go with Fab Duel. Might have a couple of uses. But outside of this, the only skill that I sometimes switch out is the Trust or the Leader skill. But Brilliance gives attack buff, gives damage reduction, this is going nowhere. Same for the Lens of Longinius, you need to throw this thing down. And well, that's three. Extra rewards eight times from the level up training, there is absolutely no way I can get this. Uh, also, no real reason to farm this, it's like 30 points per run. So either I start the new event, go for the materials in this shop, or maybe there's something over here. Oh, thank god. 250k for two characters at 55. Oh, thank God. Please keep giving me more. At this point, we're basically living or dying off of handouts. Next one has got to be Samantha. And for her, it has to be Sacred Sanctuary. I have been dying to try this skill out. 
see how much it heals, see if it works well, and especially if it also works in conjunction with Guidance of the World. Uh, if she can just stand still, keep getting standby turns, keep getting cooldown reduction from these standby turns. Okay, next up, Barrel. And finally, finally, we get the big boom. Uh, one little negative side is that she needs to stand still before casting this one, not to mention the 5 energy cost, but with a little bit of help, with a little bit of a push, I think it's possible to use it on turn 1. Uh, next one, Faisal. But for Faisal, I'm in a little bit of a bind, because on one side I do think the extra crit rate and crit damage from Heart of Alert might be really, really nice, especially with this thing. This makes alerts trigger not only when foes use skills, but if an enemy is below alert and they use a tactical skill, it still counts as them using a skill. The only way for them to be immune to alert is to do absolutely nothing and just pass their turn. So part of me really wants to go full alert on him, because I think he might be really, really fun. Uh, not to mention, he gets a double attack on the alert shot. But on the other side, uh, he needs to be put in position properly. Uh, he also needs the enemies to not be careful around his alert area. So I think I might want to start with Below Volley, yet another AoE. On top of Barrel, that's going to be quite a little bit of AoE damage. Uh, also, I'm curious to see if these instances of AoE damage can still proc his debuffs. The trait says that whenever he deals damage, 70% chance to inflict one random level 2 debuff. These are 5 instances of a 70% chance to inflict level 2 debuffs. Might be nice. <laughs> Alert eventually, but I'm saving this one for Safia. Uh, next up, it's got to be Cole. Another 80,000 experience, we have only 10 left, and it's got to be Wipeout. <gasps> Zero thought goes into this. The leader skill is something I swap between leader and self-heal, as Omen of Death is never leaving this slot, but we'll see how she performs in PvP later. Let's see if the quests give us a little bit more experience, another 300k, fantastic, and another 350k, we can do 12. I think we can actually do 12. So Edda is the next one, P5. And rank 11. Oh, yeah, we don't have it. 110. And I guess we can check out some of the rank 11 skills first hand. That's it, number one. And they're already gone. <laughs> Yeah, healing received is still a random debuff. Uh, defense down is a level 2 at least, it's from his trait. But yeah, that's curious. Like, either I got really, really unlucky, the weapon does not inflict debuffs on AoE attacks. So 70% chance for one random debuff and he applied two. I actually missed three 30% chances. Ah, well, what can you do? Yeah, even in this case, uh, the Outlaw Guard has no debuffs. But two hits. Yeah, two hits, this guy went to attack down, healing received, no passive skills, physical defense down and crit down. People laugh Faisal off, but when it comes to applying debuffs, he's actually really damn good. Uh, eight characters at 55, that's another 400k experience. This is so good. I can put most of my team back up to par. Uh, all just to get her to rank 11, because when it comes to her skill, I don't think this is all that important. Uh, storm sniping might be nice, it's, a, it's got a real nice range, but I do want to try take arms before that, because that's yet another energy restoration skill, and the assisting attacks actually go up to 130% damage. Not only that, she also gets another plus 2. So right now at 0 stars, this is going to be 3 assisting attacks per turn at 130% damage, which should be higher than her normal attacks. 
and I think I still want to keep Gadding Gleam too. That accounts for self damage, Gadding Gleam for team wide damage. Uh, Leonide, Leonide, Honest, I'm not a big fan. I'll try him out a little bit, I'm not sure if these skills I've picked are even good for him. There's another couple I might want to try, but I'm not really going to spend the Castalia to bring him up. If anything, a second healer might be alright. Stinger, also really, really good, helped a lot in the tower. Uh, the other one is sadly a Watcher, Agile Eye. Uh, suppression is a pretty cool unit. I actually like him quite a lot. Most of the other ones I've just been using for the weapon stages and they don't really need to go any higher than this. That's 10, 11, just one more. Yeah, I guess that, that one more is going to be Leonide. Again, legendary unit. Feels a little bit bad leaving him behind. And once more, we're going with the Glow Impact Thrust, even though six turns cooldown. He's only using this once per fight. Okay, that's our 12 units. Uh, that should be it for the Voyage Memento. Can claim all, that's even more experience. And that's our phase done. A chest, phase 17 complete. So, what else is in here? Uh, clear 613, clear 614, two breakers, two seekers, four pieces of gear at 60, two destroyers to rank 11, and 12 characters to 57. Ah, yeah, this 57 hurts a little bit. Sadly, these are just turrets. So, this is the one I'm aiming for next. Uh, phase 18, and I'm afraid Phase 18 is going to have to wait like next week. On the bright side, Sabrina's banner lasts for another 15 days, and fingers crossed, Safia isn't going to follow suit immediately after, so there's going to be a little bit more time to save. Still, uh, should end up with like 40-ish, maybe 50 rolls by the time Safia comes up, and then and only then I will touch the gacha again. That's one down. Okay, Barrel survives this. I don't have the double strike, so we're just going to take this one out. Ah, uh, yeah, let's put one of those there and uh, give her yet another order. Okay, she swaps. We tanked everything we could tank, basically.
but we can slow this one down and also give it magic resistance down, so screw him. Okay, finally, boom. Come on, 6k heal, <laughs> you asshole. Ah, uh, that one is at half HP as well. Uh, I guess I can give you double attack. Almost. Okay, round 10. Counter, and that's gone. And we have one round to deal with this one. But yeah, this one is turn 11, 120. Uh, no second attack turn, sadly. But that's it. Oh god, that took a while. Not gonna lie, that took a while. But that's a 3 star on a level 65 tarot stage. And that gave us absolutely nothing. Heals wise, I still don't know how to feel about quite a few of them. Uh, Samantha, I did like Sacred Sanctuary in a couple of situations, especially because it doesn't uh, doesn't let her consume energy, at least for that one turn. After that one turn, though, she's basically back to having to rely on Radiant Stamp, and I'm not sure how I feel about giving up the single target heal, because I've got Mefa that heals a lot, and I've been running double Course of Fortune, that also help healing quite a bit, but I don't know how to feel about giving up that single target heal, seriously. As for the others, uh, Mefa has been doing quite fine, even though I don't cast Come Home Everybody as often as I probably should, not to mention this is a 3 cost skill. Uh, thankfully she's on Course of Fortune, but if you don't get the extra energy regen from these two buffs, yeah it might be a little bit difficult to upkeep this Come On Everybody. Uh, Cole has been doing fine, wipe out costs, a bit too much energy, but it's worth it. And Beryl, again, 5 energy is a bit much, but she has ways to get there, uh, mostly if you run both Gloria and Edda, because extra energy from Take Arms also helps quite a bit. The only downside is that you only cast Take Arms when you are pretty close to an enemy, otherwise she basically wastes the extra damage. And her assisting attacks actually haven't been dealing all that much damage either. I don't know if it's for the low level weapons, I don't know if it's for the high defense of the monsters. And I think I might leave Take Arms out and bring Fortification back in, because the extra box is somehow surprisingly useful. Alright then, I guess that's going to be it for me for the moment. Very happy about this new milestone, really glad to see most of the units I wanted to use have gotten a nice little boost, and as always, thanks a lot for watching, and see you guys around soon, ciao!